Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're back here in the 69th episode of Bosses in Action. We have Albert Vasquez, Vasquez uh, here. Um, you're out of Miami, is that correct? That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Excellent. And so he's going to be walking us through follow-up boss and kind of going over some different newsletter ideas that he has um, and some different promotional folders and how to stay out of those. Um, and so we're going to be just jumping right in and kind of going from there. So awesome. awesome. Well, thank you for having me, Trenton. Yeah. So, you know, email is such an important part of our business. Um, we do it, you know, so often. And um, I think that it's it's really important to set yourself up for success by connecting the right tools. I know that there is, a you know, a lot of different people may have different preferences, pr predominantly for, 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 for me and for our team. Uh, we tried out a few different solutions. I highly, highly want to plug in SendGrid. They have like a free like uh, account uh, option that you can connect with your follow-up boss. Um, I'll drop some links in there that there's already support docs articles already from follow-up boss on this. I'm, those are the links that I'm going to be putting in there. There's a lot. I mean, if you want to talk to your follow-up boss success manager, you can, but there's already a lot of content from follow a boss on this that they can help you set it up um i was actually reading a few of these myself right and i ideally what what i want to encourage everybody out here to do is to be able to send batch emails um for a few different reasons right like um if, if you're a solo agent yeah you definitely are going to be thinking about having a high open rate and that's that's great but if you're a team leader the follow boss email integration is out of hand amazing, right? Because what we one of the things that we do, and I'll share, I'll share my screen with you guys in a bit, is you can create the email and send it as the members from your team. So, you know, um, like for example, we have Mark on our team, so we create the email and that same email, we select, let's say a thousand people and it'll go out from the assigned agent from each of those 1000 people. Um, and it's really nice. We get it right now. I just pulled up some metrics and we're kind of averaging a 55% unique open rate. Like that's bananas. If you consider the industry average, I believe is around 19%. So I ideally, I don't know if the chat, if we can take a look at a few things in the chat. I'm going to share a few ideas. Uh, there is a few things that I kind of want to get off my chest right off the bat. I hope no one's going to get mad at me here, right? But um, I first heard this... Um, I believe it was from Dan, right? Dan, Dan, the CEO of Follow Boss, right? He's like, hey, text, like simple emails create a higher engagement. And don't get me wrong, I grew up in email culture, right? Like I've been in real estate for, you know, um, for some, quite some time now. And I know that the fancy, the flashy, do I have a fancy banner and all these images and all that stuff? Like I get that we always thought that that was like the way to go. And there, and that, and it does have its place. But there is such a big opportunity that we found in conversion when we are being a little bit more mindful to know that the email, when you click on an email, um, and this is the question to you, the viewer, like when you look at an email and you see the the first line, it's an image. What do you think? Newsletter. You know. Right. Or 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 some type of promotion, right? Promotion, yes, yes. Standard type, you know, repetitive. So for us to be able to play with the subject line and then play with that first sentence. That first sentence is so crucial because that's very likely, like, I don't know about you, but when you're on your iPhone and you see the, the email, right, coming in, like you're noticing that it'll tell you the subject line and maybe like a first sentence or two. Nope. And to try to be so strategic about what that first sentence or two is gonna be and to who your audience is, uh, who, your, who that audience is, is so key. Um, what One of the things that we love to do is be able to segment, like, well, and, by the way, I, I am ch chattering about a, a lot here, so Trent, feel free to interrupt me. And I don't know if there's any questions on you, but one of the things that we love to do, and this is kind of like one of those first tips, is sometimes it, it makes a lot of sense to create your first original message. So, like, think about the masses, and then segment that same message. So, all I'm changing is the first sentence to, let's just say, my active buyers versus my cold buyers versus the people that are just looky looks. Right. I'll try to add a segmented portion to the first sentence. I'll give you an example, something like a looky, like someone that's cold that's months out. I'm like, hey, Trenton, I'll insert first name. I know that you're quite a few months out and you're just looking for the moment, right? And thought that this would be, 
I try to make that first sentence, like reel them in to know that it's a little bit more tailored to them. And the rest of that body of that email is going to be very generic of what everybody else got. But I try to be very uh, intentional with the first sentence, you know, and definitely with the subject line. Especially when you mentioned that there's like different images that you could see right away. And it's, you know, this might not necessarily be personalized for myself, but when you have that standard messaging right like that, you know, that that's, you're right. That draws them in because it connects them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so let me show you some examples here and um, I'm not, if you want to pause or get my, get my attention for what's going on with the, um, let me see here with the group chat. Um, just let me know. Can you see my screen here? Yes, we can see it. All right. So this is probably not what you want to see. This is connecting this. So first let me, um, let me kind of show you, right. Cause sometimes people need to see it. Right. But, uh, this is our SendGrid account. Okay. And by the way, just kind of like a little, you know, for some people, this is not, not to overhype it. When you go to your dashboard on SendGrid, um, and you see these numbers, these are not unique. If you want to reach your unique, you go to, uh, on the side here, you go to stats, you go to overview. And the reason I'm showing this is just for you guys to have a little bit of, um, you know, hey, we, we do something, right? So right now we're averaging about a 55% unique open rate. And that is pretty much through the batch emails that we're sending here through Follow a Boss. And I have a few samples, like this is one that we did um, uh, back last year. So this is more of, hey, let's have images, right? So in here, what we did is we went to Canva and uh, we created these banners and the size, by the way, I'm. Uh, for those that know me, you know, that I like to be very thorough. I'm very like, I like to just make sure all the numbers are good. So if you go to Canva and you want to be able to kind of create your banners, this is the sizing option you want to go ahead and use. So uh, technically, if you Google it, you're going to want to see a 600 by 150 pixels. That technically is, you know, great. I didn't find it to be as amazing when you see it on your desktop. When you see it on mobile, if you do either of these sizes, they're going to come out the same. But I believe that the experience for, and I know that most people are going to open their email on a mobile device. So um, that's up to you. If you want to go with, you know, the, the recommended is 600 by 150. I found that 900 to 240 doesn't increase the file size. And you are still, um, like, it's still showing up really good on mobile and on, on desktop. Um, so I would definitely recommend you, you use the banners this way. And this is kind of like a few of the banners that we've used, which is pretty much a lot of what you're seeing here. You know, it shows up like a little GIF there. This is, we're doing a giveaway. We were promoting our, our, our magazine. And, um, you know, we talk a little bit about real estate and a little bit about our reviews. And, you know, if you want to um, get a copy of this, um, I, I, you know, we can send you, by the way, there's no giveaways going on right now or anything else like that, but we can send it, but this is very simple. This is very simple. And I want to share two parts of our journey. We've done this and this would be like a once a month type of thing. And what we ended up kind of more settling with is that sometimes, and this is very lengthy. So a lot of people probably wouldn't make it to our reviews or to the real estate news. So another great idea, instead of thinking about a monthly newsletter, and you don't even have to call it a newsletter, just find like a weekly check-in. Like you can divide the same email and I can say, hey, I want to be able to thank you, right? As in, and invite you to the giveaway. And I can send you another email later on, another week later, telling you about our magazine. And I can send you another email later on about our, our news, right? And I can tell you another something else about our, 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 our reviews. Like you can split it up into four, like the same content being split out into four weeks it's tr instead of trying to like hammer everything in one email, because, um, as you can see here, we're trying to be concise with the email, not, not too wordy. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's any questions on anything of this right now. There's, there's this one. And then we got something else that's a little bit more link based, right? So there's no photos on this one. Um, I would like to know for those of you that are going to be creating stuff on Canva and, and, and adding this, I think you should be very mindful of the size of the images when you are exporting. Okay. Because as I believe, I believe that if I'm not mistaken, all these banners put together in size made up maybe one megabyte. 
right? So the e so these are like kilobyte type of like sizes, and um, they still look good. You got to keep in mind, just look at it on your phone. And we did a lot of testing with it. You know, we just literally um, emailed it to ourselves. Saw if it was too grainy. Uh, saw if it was too small. And when you keep it real small, as far as file size for the email, you allow for the the file size of the email not to be too clunky, so it gets delivered pretty well. Um, and you can also adapt this version, which is just a very like email based, like very text and link heavy. There's no photos here. And I don't know if there's any questions on any of this stuff right now, but our customer appreciation event was heavily promoted through email. Um, and it was a great turnout. And I don't know if there's any questions here on this, but. Um, no, yeah, but I do have one. Do you see more success with the ones that have the images that go throughout that kind of break up the emails or more of where you have links that can take someone directly to where they're looking? Great, great, great question. So here, take a look, right? So technically speaking, right, this one is supposed to have more link. This one that's very non-photo, you know, very like call, call to action being one simple one, right? This should have more clicks on it. So this one, did you register for our holidays? So uh, let's go here. We do have another question from Linda. Yeah. Uh, is there anything we can do when creating these to keep us out of promotional and spam folders? So good question. Uh, let me get to that. So let me, I'm, I can't give you the statistical answer right now, but here's what I can tell you from just kind of like our recollection. Yeah. We did a lot of emails and we do like this one and we'll still add this type of to our rotation. Um, but we noticed that this one is just, a lot easier to keep it. There's a few reasons why I prefer this type of an email versus this type of an email. When we do once a week, right? Or once every two weeks and it's one message, not like here, like here we're talking about, you got a giveaway, you got a magazine, you got real estate news, we got reviews. You know, there's another one that we were promoting our, our client our, our client appreciation event, right? There's a lot of call to actions there. And that's cool. Like you can have different things to engage. What I love about one particular, like this one's only about the photo shoot, right? The, the the call to action is a lot simpler for the consumer to engage with. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, just on my recollection, the clicks, unique clicks were very similar. Um, it, did, it wasn't like, oh, wow, if we did it with the photos, it was a big blowout. So let's always do photos. It wasn't, that's not what I found. As far as email delivery, I'm going to be sharing this. Um, I'll probably drop some of the links in here. But the, here's a few, like, if you go to, like, help.followboss.com, um, here is what, you know, there's some troubleshooting. Like, I personally use Google, right? But there are some few things that you could do. Like, Megan wrote this article just, like, about a month ago on what you can do, like, with your... I know there's going to be some... I don't want to make this a very technical webinar. There's a lot of links on this, and you can definitely talk to your account um, uh, success manager. But there's simple things that you can do if you are finding your delivery rates not being high. Um, there's another article here, like hopefully if you're using Follow a Boss, you're either using it with Google, which is highly recommended, or a Microsoft 365 account. If you're doing this with a GoDaddy email account, um, uh, never heard of Rackspace, Yahoo, AOL, or anything else, um, they Follow a Boss really just recommends you kind of get either a Google, it could be like a Google Work, uh, workplace or even a personal Gmail account, right? It's just um, the reputation and the abilities to send email is a lot higher, even if you don't go with a SendGrid account. And I want to emphasize SendGrid does have a free option. Um, so if you are having problems with email delivery, I think you should check, you know, if you're connected your Google account or Microsoft 365, and then they have some like, hey, look, if you had some additional issues, here's some of the settings that you need to have on your Gmail to troubleshoot it so that you can have, you know, pretty good email delivery rates. Um, hope that answered your question, but you can find all that type of information at help.followboss.com and I'll add some of the links in here. Excellent, yeah, so I think that that's a great place to take a look, Linda, um, if you're having some of those issues. Um, and also, great. if you wanna check with your success manager as well, um, they can help with that. Um, so well, send, is a, what is SendGrid? So great that you're going over this. Yeah, so I saw the question just coming. So SendGrid, if you go to your follow boss, right? If you go to a admin, da, 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 and then you go to APIs, no, not APIs, 
if you go ooh, ooh, do, 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 integrations, okay? And you'll notice that for email marketing, SendGrid is one of those batch email providers that you can actually connect your account to, uh, which is this, right? This is where I was able to get this reporting. And then you can go ahead and um, do some more things here in the settings. Like I definitely recommend if you do set up a SendGrid account, email SendGrid and say, hey, is there anything else that I can do to improve? I know for me, they kind of like send their authentication. They wanted to like, you know, verify who you are and all these other things, um, which would be useful as, as, as well. Um, let me just stop sharing and see if there's any questions in here that we can answer. Um, let me see. Great question. Okay. So let since, since we're looking for questions there, let me just kind of, um, promote, I guess, why I'm a big fan of this, of sending it. I have tried, this is by the way, not a bash to any other options, but I have tried other options. And it was a little bit too complicated for me. Like, I want to show you, I just, I don't know if maybe seeing it, let me just share the screen again, I guess, right? Maybe seeing it is different for you, right? But this is how easy it is to send a batch email, okay? I can go to people, oh, let me do the, hold on. Let me just blur out the stuff. Uh, da -da -da, roadmap. Where's my power-ups? Wait. All right, perfect. So, like I can go in with follow boss and use all my filters. So I can do stage, right? So this is kind of like, you know, a, a, a very, um, let's just say hot, right? So this is a very common thing. Like, and this is what I find a little bit complicated with a lot of other systems, right? Like you can go and I can filter this out and then I can say language. So we have another primary language field, right? And I can say, I want to send this all to the Spanish ones, right? To Spanish speakers, right? And then Spanish, we have a Spanish bilingual as well. And I can already know these are predominantly people in stage hot for us. I can just go click here. I can filter this out even more. I can even say, you know, um, average price points, you know, is greater than, you know, $400,000. You, 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 you try to get what I'm saying here, like you can get a lot. I, I can create a very tailored list and this is part of those tips that I want to make sure you guys get right where you can may have one message and you can, um, find ways to segment that same message to different audiences. Um, so I can go here and then I can just, you know, click on the button over here and then select all. And then I'm going to click that little beautiful batch email button. And when I click on that, I'm going to have an option. Am I going to send this from myself? Or am I going to send this from the assigned agent? That's a, that's a huge win right there. Another huge win, if you have multiple emails, is include all email addresses. And then for those of you that are using relationships, I want to show you one of my favorite, favorite merge fields that is amazing for open rates. It's contact and relationship first name. You know, that is one way, you know, if you address the husband and wife on the subject line, that is a real easy way for it to seem a lot more authentic than, um, than anything else. And that's part of the, that kind of like leads me to why I'm a big advocate for sending the emails, the email batch through follow boss because of all this merge fields. I have a ton of, and that, and it's not just the follow up merge fields, but all our custom merge fields. Like these are other custom merge fields that we have. Like it's a very, very, very long list of merge fields and it helps you really fine tune that message. Do you use MailChimp or do you email directly from follow boss? Looks like directly from follow boss. Yeah, definitely directly from follow boss. I have tried uh, MailChimp. I do find um, uh, that it's easier to send it from here. I do like the history that we get from here. I do like, by the way, if you're looking for your follow boss reporting, if you go to reporting, batch emails. I don't know if everybody knows how to, you know, kind of access some of this, right? But if you go to any of your batches, um, you can go into details. You can see, you know, who unsubscribed, who it bounced. You get a lot of, the, I, I like how fast that, that I am in the same platform that I send and I can fix it. I don't have to jump a window, right? I don't have to leave somewhere else 
to kind of uh, get that information. Um, let me give you um, a, a good tip here um, for those of you that are going to try something like this, because part of this was kind of like promoted with like, well, how can you get better email engagements? So if you're going to try them out, it does. I want to say a few things from experience. Let me make myself very vulnerable and let me be very transparent, right? I've been in the real estate industry for, you know, good 20 years. And I've always heard everybody tell me about newsletters, 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 newsletters. I was like, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me. I thought it was going to be like, whatever. We did our first newsletter last year, honest. And we saw how much engagement that created, how much like the engagement is like open clicks. You don't have to necessarily coordinate it with a response, you know, unsubscribe rate. For us, and we've sent like a lot of emails, it's about 1%. This whole, if you are struggling mentally and emotionally, take it from someone that has sent like hundreds of thousands of emails that right now our average unsubscribe rate is like 1% or below. Like this whole, you're a no. Now, obviously it all has to do with the audience that you're targeting. Like if you like, you know, got a bunch of people, you never interacted anything with them. You, they didn't subscribe to your website, you know, like you, you, you bought a farm list and you just emailed them, probably the unsubscribe rate there, you know, is going to be a little bit higher. You definitely have to try to be mindful, right? And, and have good email protocols. What I like about SendGrid is that it shows you your score, right? Like your seller reputation, your, your sender reputation. And if there's things that you're doing that are a red flag, it'll sh it can send you a report like, hey, these are people that are on, not just the unsubscribes and the bounces, but these are people that like reported you. This is something that like, so those are things that are, that are helpful. But let me, let me continue with the fact that I did my first email, um, a newsletter last year. After that, we started to notice that it's a real good way to stay very top of mind and non-salesy. If, um, I, I like to identify a newsletter to be what can I, what message can I say and deliver to them that th that audience that I've selected to send this to would find a value. And the fact that you had like, an, like you saw in one of ours, like if you saw the fact that yes, we might have a magazine to promote for real estate news, or we might have, um, a news article that might, you know, like it's educational that we bring in real estate into there. Like you're still leading your message with a, something of value that you want to give them. Let it be an appreciation event. Let it be something free, right? Or let, let another good thing to give away are, are if you have a buyer seminar, um, investor seminar, any seminar, if you're giving away something for free that will be valuable to those people that you like selected on that batch, lead with that, you know, and you'll find yourself like being relevant consistently. Um, we sent a lot of emails and like I said, we have less than 1% unsubscribe rate. I think that's great, especially about hearing about the newsletter portion of it is being able to send some type of valuable content. So if you're planning out, you know, at least a month ahead of time, what is coming up next month that you can provide for them? You know, maybe try to alternate that to where it is a few different items. You know, we have Linda over here who asked a question kind of about um, <clears throat> if we wanted to regularly send our newsletters, we'd probably need to take a formal class that's several hours long and interactive to fully understand how to properly do it. With that being said, is there anything that you would suggest, maybe two or three things to kind of focus on newsletter-wise that you've seen really successful from, you know, whether that is a giveaway or maybe that's a downloadable thing or that is a something to sign up for? All right, so it's a great question. I, I definitely relate. That I, and I want to take a little moment on that. Linda, thank you for that question because I resonate. I want to emphasize with the story that I was in real estate for a very long time and I held myself for many, many thousands of reasons. After I walked in through my first newsletter, I noticed that the art of it is mostly about showing up and sending. And yes, you have to have a good message, but a lot of times... I myself have been the victim of like, I wanted for it to be the most marketable, awesome email. And the reality is that if you even look into our account deeper, some of these highly engaged emails to thousands of people were not necessarily a newsletter. Like we just did one on Friday 
And we have right now, just from Friday to today, about a 40 plus percent open rate. And it was just like, hey, by the way, have you heard of this program? You know, a lot of times it's not, no, it's, and again, it's who the segmented audience is. So, to, to, you know, you mentioned in, in, in your question there, right? Is there a class? Yes, there's a lot of ways to perfect it, but I highly, highly, highly encourage you take a leap of faith, find something of value. And if even if just one thing from there, like, and, and you don't have to have like, because sometimes we see a newsletter and we think it has to be like a newspaper, right? Or this like has to have all these sections, right? Like I can't just lead with one topic, but it, I, I'm, a, I'm starting to be more of an advocate of that one topic type of an email, sending it out and getting responses. You know, I, I guess you don't have to necessarily even label it as a newsletter. I want to encourage everybody on this webinar to do this. This, this one came out highly successful for us. Number one, come out with a subject line that's short and simple. You can use ChatGPT for something like this. Tell ChatGPT, hey, create, you know, something that is catchy and uh, engaging for an email subject line and make, and then tell ChatGPT to make it into a question, okay? Using first name merge field. So try to at least use the first name as a merge field and type, make the, quest, the, the subject a question. Questions create curiosity. Okay, so that's number one. And then number two, create that email. You don't have to worry about, you can use the Canva images if you want. You can use all these other links, but here's what worked out really well for us. One of them that worked really well. Find something of value that you can ask. Um, and then w whatever it is that, that you're promoting it, you know, that you want to tell them, tell them, hey, by the way, you know, all you have to do to let me know if you're interested is, you know, resp respond with the letter, um, in number one, if it's this, number two, if it's that, number three, if it's this, right? So give them an option on how, like, how to respond to you quickly. You know, just reply number one, if you want this, reply number two, if you want that, reply number three, if you want this. Sometimes I make it funny. Sometimes I'm like, hey, if you never want me to message you again, I mean, that's not necessarily funny, but like, it's not the biggest joke in the world, but <laughs> you know, it's something, it's like, you know, Three and sometimes people do want an e a way out. Um, there's some people that even um, kind of advocate that, right? Some of the a real good email practice is allowing them. Hey, by the way, if you don't want me to send you this type of stuff again, then just respond with the number four. You know, as an example, you'll be surprised how much email engagement you're going to get from that. We've tried it. Um, uh, another thing that works really well, which I know um, there's been others that kind of promote this really well, is send an email as if you were to send a text message, short, engaging, curiosity, subject line, one sentence type of stuff, maybe two as as the the whole body and get straight to the point. Don't build up the story. Like if you, if your, if your, if your subject line says, Hey, how can you, you know, earn 5,000, uh, save $5,000 on your next purchase as an example, go straight to that in the first sentence or create a risk or ask a question for a response, you know? Um, and treat this a little bit like, like phone calls, right? Like good phone etiquette as an agent to try to create a good line of communication is asking good questions. The better the question, the better the, the, the engagement that you're going to get. Play with that. Start with an audience of a hundred, then build it up to an audience of 200, 300 and go up from there and just have fun and have the whole follow up boss community on Facebook, be your like partners, right? Or your, your buddies. Hey, I tried this. Was anybody else trying something else similar? I think those are good. Fine. We tried that number system where you give them a number to choose from and a welcome email. And so when they first register from, you know, lead generation, uh, we're asking them, you know, thanks for signing up. Welcome to our site or whatever. Um, reply back with either a number one, you know, you're looking to purchase here in the next 90 days to, you know, you're looking, you know, this year, three, four, five, just looking, just browsing, not really interested kind of going from there. I think that's great. And then that second one that you mentioned as well, um, by sending a text, kind of sending a text into an email, I think that's great when you have a bad phone number even. And so oh, yeah. take that text message that you would normally send out, but put it into an email format and still send it out and having it kind of short and sweet, you know, making sure that you have that catching, engaging subject line. I think that's great. Um, you know, last kind of questions here as we're running out of time. Um, you know, talk about wh where you're building the emails. You mentioned you're using Canva for some of the graphics, and then you're taking those graphics and putting them into Follow Up Boss to build out the email. Is that correct? 
That is correct. Although I will say I was uh, looking into our follow boss Facebook community, which is like golden with all the recommendations on this. I saw some people, um, I haven't done it myself, but I saw someone recommend you can actually use Google Docs and then just kind of like upload your images and create your email in there with GIFs and everything else like that. And apparently it has an option to export it as an HTML code, uh, like, and then you can send it as an HTML. Um, there, there, if you want to kind of have something HTML-ish, um, I, I, yeah, if I am going to use an image, I use those sizes that I specified. Those, I, I researched those sizes. Those are the sizes that are going to work best, best on width. Um, and definitely try to keep the images, you know, low in size. And by the way, there's nothing wrong by sending an email and it's just one topic and there's no, there's no image. I promise you, no one's going to be like, I do not want to work with that realtor. They sent me an email and didn't have an image, like have a link, definitely have a call to action. The call to action can be a response with like respond, you know, this, this, that, if you want this, or it could be like, Hey, click here if you want this and click here if you want that, you know? Uh, have a definitely have a call to action. Don't make it too too long, and start sending, start playing with it. You know you're gonna like hone in your skill on that by the more you do it and ask questions in the community. Like that's how I that's how I got into it. There's a lot of people in the community that encouraged me, and I'm a, I'm a product of it. Excellent. Well, thank you, Albert, for sharing uh, some of your insights here on how to send newsletters and the batch emails. Um, takeaways kind of are use smaller images for when you do the batch email, um, utilize Canva for some of those graphics and send grid was another option as well, uh, for being able to track open rates. Um, so thank you very much. If you have any other questions, everybody, um, please drop them into either the chat now, or we will take a look on once we post it into the community Facebook group as well. Um, Albert, if anybody wants to reach you, uh, is there an email or a social that they can kind of ask you any questions on? Yeah, if you have any questions on this topic, we'll be happy to help. Um, on Instagram, it's where I'm most engaged in, and it's out Al like Albert, like my name, the number four, and then Holmes, Albert four Holmes. Um, and then yeah, you can do it on Facebook as well. Um, I just a little slower on Facebook. Um, if you want to email. Yeah, it's albert at avregroup.com. Much rather the social channels and we can, you know, interact through there. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions on what you would like to do to, you know, optimize it, let's connect. The number one thing for me, though, I highly, highly would encourage is to start sending and connect your emails with um, one of the integrated um, options from Follow Boss. I use SendGrid. I know a lot of people want to use MailChimp and there's there's some MailChimp options out there. Uh, the purpose of today is to show you how using it with SendGrid, you can get that high delivery amount, like getting 50 something percent unique open rates um, and still sending it through Follow Boss. I find that to be really fast, really efficient and have all that history within the Follow Boss timeline. It's a huge win for me and being able to use all those merge fields. Um, sometimes we want maybe like, oh, there's something more to it, like a secret sauce that's beyond that. But I find that when it comes to this, it's kind of like calls, right? Like sometimes the secret sauce is just being able to do it a little bit more often to get those results. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely available for any questions and here to help. Excuse me. Excellent. Well, thank you, Christina. Yes, this is recorded. Uh, you'll be able to see this in the follow up boss Facebook group. And thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. And, Albert, it was nice to chat with you again. Awesome, man. Take it easy. All right, see you.